Welcome back everyone in another YouTube video, in uh, the 20th YouTube video on my channel in which I'm going to be answering your questions uh, that you guys have sent me on my Instagram account. I strongly suggest you to stay until the last question that has been asked because there's so many interesting and new stuff besides the 120 questions that I have answered. Some of the questions um, that uh, some of you have sent me on my Instagram account are um, already uh, repeat uh, and I have already answered them in those long videos. Uh, but I will nevertheless uh, take my time and answer all the questions here. So uh, we're starting with the first one. The first question is, can you upload pictures on Instagram when employed by Qatar Airways? Now, there is something called a social media policy. Once you get employed um, in Qatar Airways, you're going to get familiarized yourself with the social media policy, where clearly it's written um, how you can apply a photo, which photo you can post uh, on social media, what types of photos you can post on social media. Um, it is not just a simple answer, yes, you can post or no, you cannot post. Uh, one thing you need to bear in mind is that while posting any photos and if you're currently working for Cateris, you need to be respectful. Um, therefore, um, your other private pictures uh, must be in coloration. If you already are posting pictures in uniform, they must be in coloration with the respect for the airline you are working for. And um, this, as I said, is something very well defined in the social media policy. I would be worried about this once I get the job and um, you're going to get familiarized yourself and I don't think that there will be any problem um, posting pictures and what types of pictures you should be posting. Best way of introduction during the interview. Over here I would focus on something, uh, on three elements actually. Uh, number one is be yourself. Uh, number two, look um, comfortable within yourself and number three use the name of the recruiter when you will be introducing yourself before everything else starts um, and during the open day um, you have heard the names of the recruiters and uh, when you will be introducing yourself don't forget to mention beside the eye contact beside the hand gestures and um, uh, all your appearance that you have, don't forget to use the name of the recruiters. So for example, let's say the recruiter name will be Tanya. She will introduce herself irrespective of, of what the name would be. I would be standing with my, um, with my hands, not like this, but I'm gonna be looking like I'm approachable person. Definitely not like this. Definitely not shy, because if you're standing with your I understand that this is a professional way of standing, but I would do something like holding my hands in a comfortable position. I'm going to be having a pleasant um, a tone of voice. I'm going to be having an eye contact with the recruiter. As I said, for example, Miss Tanya, and I would introduce myself in a way. Good afternoon, Miss Tanya. My name is Julia George. I come from Macedonia. I'm 35 years old, and it's an absolute pleasure meeting you today. So... In this case, you are showing that you are comfortable within yourself. You don't have any boundaries. Because remember, if you learn this answer by heart and you go and you say, Hi, my name is Julia George. I come from Macedonia. I'm 35 years old. And nice to meet you, Miss Tanya. Did I show emotions? No. I've learned the sentence by heart. But I would say, when you're introducing yourself, use emotions in this way. How do you use emotions? You're adjusting the tone of voice as you speak. I'm currently, as I'm talking to you right now with this very simple question, I'm using a lot of emotions when I'm introducing myself. I am pointing on my name. Hello, my name is Julia George. So that is immediately triggering the brain of the recruiter. She's catching moments, right? She's saying hello. She's pointing on the hello or good afternoon. She's pointing on her name. My name is Julia George, I come from Macedonia, I'm 35 years old and it's an absolute pleasure meeting you today, Miss Tanya. 
There's so many valid informations that I have posted here and so much of the um, tone of voice that I have highlighted which shows to the recruiter that I'm a person who pays attention to emotions. I'm emotional, I'm able to express emotions and that will give me a sign if I'm the recruiter that people who show emotions they're also able to recognize emotions. So therefore, when you will be introducing yourself, once again, I would mention, um, show that you are yourself. Don't show that you have learned this answer by heart. Show um, that you're comfortable within yourself, confident within yourself. And last but not the least, don't forget to mention the name of the recruiter that you're going to speaking with. It's very, very important. There is an interesting question coming up and uh, it's uh, from one of my followers from Serbia. He's asking me, uh, could you tell us something interesting uh, that has happened in um, some of your flights? Uh, I would say every flight there was something interesting happening. Every flight is a story for, um, for itself. And if I could sit down one day and write a book about the, the things happening um, on board, and what I have experienced, I think it's going to be the best-selling comedy. Um, I might do that one day, I'm not saying no, I just need to first uh, focus on the job that I am currently employed with. Nevertheless, there is an interesting uh, story. I was uh, working, if I'm not mistaken, in the economy class still, and we were doing a shuttle. We were actually uh, flying to uh, Johannesburg. And we were stopping in um, in Cape. No, it was the other way around. We were flying to Cape Town and stopping in Johannesburg and then coming back. It was something like that. Or either we were stopping in Cape Town and going to Johannesburg. I really cannot remember because was, this was so long. It was like more than eight, nine years ago. So we did so many announcements uh, that, ladies and gentlemen, we have arrived in Johannesburg. Uh, if Johannesburg is your destination, please disembark the aircraft now. If you're continuing onwards to Cape Town, uh, please remain on board. And uh, we're still doing that, we're still doing that. And, that was, uh, and then we were doing head count, we were counting the passengers who are left and who were staying here. So we have in this uh, case uh, the correct number of um, uh, passengers that remain on board that's supposed to go to Cape Town. Uh, but one thing was a mistake, one important thing was a mistake, that one passenger has disembarked the aircraft by mistake and one passenger has stayed in the aircraft by mistake, so therefore the number of headcounts was, was correct. Right after takeoff, there is a passenger standing up, and I'm walking in the cabin before we start the service, and there's a passenger standing up saying, um, yeah, we're going to Johannesburg now, and I was like, uh, no sir, we were in Johannesburg, and believe me, the time on ground is like, an hour and a half until passengers disembark, until the cleaners come and clean the aircraft and prepare it uh, for the next um, next journey, which is like an hour, I think, to Cape Town. And we're like, um, no, sir. I was like, no, sir. We were in Johannesburg now, and there was so many announcements like, you should have disembarked. And he said, oh, no, I thought it's just a stop before we go to Johannesburg. I was like, what kind of stop the whole aircraft would do if it's not the destination and it's clearly written in the boarding pass but the, most probably the passenger had his headphones on and was uh, watching his in-flight entertainment nevertheless we came to know this by mistake um, because the ground on the ground the uh, um, ATC control has informed the captain that we have a passenger who has disembarked by mistake <laughs> and then we figured it out that we had a passenger who stayed on board by mistake so that was one very interesting situation in which the passenger thought that we have just a one stop before we reach Johannesburg and then we're going to uh, Cape Town. Uh, as I said, many, many funny stories, a uh, few emergencies as well. Maybe uh, about them I will be talking in, uh, in another video. So I hope you like this one. Hello, thank you for your YouTube videos and you're most welcome. Uh, 15th, 11th, um, I have sent full length photo. Now I'm waiting for the answer from uh, QR. There is no time frame. Um, I know this question has been related to the time frame, how long you should be waiting. Uh, there's no time frame uh, in which you um, are going to wait for the answer. 
uh, if they're not happy with the photo you have taken or with the quality, they will definitely send you an email. Don't worry, you're not going to be disqualified unless um, the uh, human resource team sees that you're not able to follow the guidelines uh, on what type of photo you should be um, uploading and how you should be standing. I strongly suggest that in every email that you're going to receive, in every guidelines in the online application, Please pay attention to every single word. Uh, rather than going on the internet and exploring, I have seen candidates and candidates have been sending me questions that are already answered in the online application, but just out of negligence, they haven't been seeing them or they haven't been observing them. So therefore, please uh, be observant when it comes to the applications, when it comes to the guidelines, everything is written there and try to anticipate the requests on what type of photo, how you should look like, and I wish you all the best. What about BMI, body mass index? Uh, this is a parameter that is going to show uh, that you are a fit person. Now, often I receive a question, I receive questions uh, like I'm tall 172 and I have 82 kilos or I'm, am I having a proper BMI? Um, there is a frame on the internet which shows the proper BMI or body mass index according to your uh, height and according to your weight. If you belong in the group of normal uh, body mass index, you shouldn't be worried about, uh, about anything. If you belong to the group that you're below the normal or you're a little bit skinnier, also I wouldn't be worried over here. I would be worried if I'm a little bit overweight and uh, that's easy, we can work on losing weight of course. But uh, body mass index is something that is showing how fit you are and um, how proportional um, you look. Often as well, candidates are asking me, I'm a little bit more chubby, uh, can I get the job? Or I have a little bigger hips and um, different types of um, uh, requests which are uh, related to the weight, to the overweight. Now, just think of one thing. Um, how big is the aisle of the aircraft? Um, how would be for you uh, comfortable to walk up and down if you're a little bit overweight? Me currently now with this weight, I'm definitely not, uh, not uh, eligible to be on a flight or to be even as a passenger, not for a crew as well. I have come to a point when I was uh, almost crossing 80 kilos when I was a cabin crew and that was a ser serious alarm for me to lose weight and even I was having a suggestion from the grooming team itself that I should lose weight. In fact, uh, one personal story of mine regarding this uh, question would be that I have been offloaded from a flight uh, due to my uniform being tight. Um, I gained so much of weight that my uniform was very tight and I didn't alter it. So I was offloaded from a flight and that was one serious uh, indicator for me to start losing weight. And since then I started exercising, I started a uh, uh, proper diet and uh, I reached the weight of 62, 63 kilograms and I'm tall 168 centimeters. So I think that was an optimal and good weight for me. Uh, below 60, I would be too skinny. Nevertheless, uh, as I said, uh, regarding the body mass index, please have a look on the um, chart and internet on which group you belong according to your height and your weight. And uh, if you're in the normal uh, body mass index group, I don't think you should be worried about this. Um, one thing it's important is the height, uh, not of minimum height, of are you able to reach the 212 uh, centimeters and that's the, uh, the reason for doing that is to be able to close the overhead beam but at the same time to be able to access uh, the uh, safety equipment that's available on board in case of any emergency. So uh, this is a parameter that this is a rule that is a non-negotiable rule on the online application where it's written so uh, please avoid asking people questions uh, in terms of I'm not able to reach seven centimeters or six centimeters, you can extend your hand to one to two, perhaps three centimeters to close the overhead beam and to reach uh, the 212 uh, rule. But you cannot extend to seven centimeters. When it comes to height, 
Uh, this, as I said, is a non-negotiable rule, and um, I'm sorry to say this, no matter how rude it sounds, it's an absolute um, loss of time to apply if, you're, um, if you don't belong to the group uh, reaching 2 and 2 centimeters. I find it weird to say good things about myself, um, that I'm humble, that I'm kind, etc. How do I answer? Again, I would uh, relate this question to the key skills. In your CV, you have mentioned the key skills and what type of person you are. Basically, you're representing yourself to the recruitment team. And I seriously think that you should be able to be comfortable uh, and to work on getting comfortable, getting confident in expressing those key skills when you will be working um, with the airline or when, in this case, you are able to, you are doing, uh, basically you're selling yourself to the recruiters as a possible uh, cabin crew. Uh, you don't have to go to the extent to say, I'm a humble person. How much humble you are is the recruitment team who's going to be saying that. What you should be concerned about is what type of tone voice you're going to be using. Uh, remember in the question before when I spoke about the introduction, you must show that you're um, comfortable within yourself. If you're not comfortable within yourself, if you're not comfortable to, uh, let's say, answer, are you a teamwork player or you are preferring to work alone? In this question, again, you are uh, talking about yourself. You must learn to be confident and comfortable to talk about yourself, yet you must be able to show a certain level of humility when you are talking, because when you are using so much of confidence in um, um, expressing yourself and expressing what type of person you are, you might be looking like you are overpowering the recruitment team, and that is not something that they are looking for. Um, they are looking for candidates who are able to uh, show comfortable within yourself, who are able to be confident and who are able to show a certain level of humility. Therefore, um, the key to be able to speak about yourself and what type of person you are is to practice. Um, and that is, you don't have to use so much of words like, I'm a very humble person, I really love to help people. That, if you're this type of person, this is going to be visible. Uh, how it's going to be visible? One thing, as I have mentioned, your facial expression, your eye contact that you're making, your hand gestures, your body language, all of that, your tone of voice, um, how do you modulate your tone of voice? All of these factors will be talking about how humble person you are. If you're this type of person, that is going to be seen. Even if you don't use a single word of, I'm a humble person, I'm a very nice person, you don't have to use these things. Rather than that, you can say, I'm a person that loves to help people. I never wait for uh, someone to ask me to help. I am observant and I'm immediately standing up and assisting people. When I see on the street an older lady that tries to pass the street with a few bags in her hands, I get this instant instinct uh, inside me to go and take the bags for her and assist her. In this conversation, have I mentioned that I'm a humble person? No. But do you assume that I'm a humble person? Yes. So you don't have to talk about yourself so much uh, of what type of person you are. It's enough that you, you're able to share examples on uh, whether you have done something and how you have done something. And the recruitment team is going to be able to see how humble and how nice you are. About male grooming for interview. <laughs> And this a gentleman on my Instagram account has been asking me this uh, question over and over again. Definitely, uh, the guidelines for the gentleman is to wear a suit. Um, and I would suggest a suit in a black color, in a dark gray or dark blue, something that will uh, make that uh, business attire a very proper and a very nice. I would suggest a matte uh, shoes. In the color that it's matching, if it's a black suit, definitely black uh, shoes and um, uh, with not so much of details, uh, business attire shoes. Um, I would suggest a white uh, shirt and I would suggest a proper tie that is going to complement the suit. Now, 
Uh, one thing I would uh, also suggest to um, pay attention to details, this is how the cabin crew in Qatar Airways, the male cabin crew are wearing the uniform. When you will be presenting yourself with the suit in front of the recruitment team, and usually the suits have two buttons, make only the upper button uh, fastened, leave the lower button open. This is one of the grooming standards uh, that is uh, practiced in Qatar Airways, and um, I would suggest for you to do the same. Um, then I would suggest a plain watch, normal plain watch um, of a black color, of a silver or a gold, uh, not so big. Uh, I would avoid the smart watches, um, therefore, because in the grooming manual uh, of Qatar Airways, still uh, smart watches are not allowed for male or female, so no stones, just plain watch. But one thing I would suggest is if you don't have this type of watch, don't buy it, especially for the recruitment day. Um, use any watch that you have. Uh, rings should be plain rings, not rings with stones. Uh, I know that uh, certain uh, uh, nationalities or um, people in, uh, in, uh, in certain countries are wearing a lot of jewelries uh, in their hand and a lot of bangles and stuff. For the recruitment uh, day, avoid wearing them. As I said, only a plain watch and one to two plain rings that could be only on this finger. Uh, one ring here and one ring here, not more than that. Plain without any uh, stones. Definitely no earrings for the gentleman. Uh, the hairstyle for the gentleman should be a conservative hairstyle, no spiky hairstyle, no, um, no <laughs> Ronaldo, I don't know how to say it, so just if you uh, if you're concerned about what type of conservative hairstyle you should have, you can uh, feel free to Google it. And the uh, face should be shaved. Very often, I received uh, I receive uh, uh, request uh, received messages in which you are asking me, uh, is it allowed to have beard? Uh, the only type of uh, hair on the face for gentlemen that is allowed is mustache, nicely and well groomed. But I wouldn't recommend that if you're going for the open day, uh, please have a clean shaved face, well moisturized. Uh, sometimes the Candidates are also asking me, can a cabin crew wear a makeup? Um, in the grooming manual of Qatar Airways, um, nowhere it's written that the males should wear makeup. Feel free to moisture your lips. Uh, if you want to groom your um, eyebrows nicely, do it, but don't draw your eyebrows just the way I have it now. Um, as I said, clean shaved face, well moistured is uh, important. And a conservative hairstyle, no earrings, um, nice suit, business attire suit, dark gray color, dark brown, dark blue, um, with the white shirt, black suit uh, also, as I said. Matching business attire shoes, definitely not the sporty shoes, and uh, you'll be fine, you'll be perfect with this type of grooming. And no bangles, as I said, uh, plain watch, not a smart watch, and that's pretty much very simple for the gentleman. And um, the most important is, of course, having that smile that should be there on your face every time you're interacting with the candidates as well as the recruitment team. Luck matters for being a cabin crew. Many experienced crew are not able to make it. Let's talk about experienced crew. Um, experienced crew are many who are applying for Qatar Airways and you're absolutely right in this uh, question and in this comment that you have sent me that many experienced crew don't make it. It's because of the other airlines that those crew have been working for. They have uh, different standards that uh, the airline they're applying for. Nowhere it's written that if you have been experienced in a certain airline that you're going to get the job irrespective if, if it's Qatar Airways, if it's Emirates Airlines or Etihad Airways. Fly Dubai, uh, doesn't matter. I remember uh, my open day when I applied, there were so many experienced cabin crew from the um, airline in Macedonia that was shut down at that time, still it's shut down, it doesn't exist. And they were so confident that they're going to get the job. And none of them got the job. Because what they have done in the airline back then, or I don't know, in any other airline now, uh, the work culture, uh, the criteria of uh, being employed by that airline, it's not the same as the criteria that this airline has. And um, it, there can be many factors. This is a very general 
um, comment, very general question. But if you would like to uh, think deep and to know why they haven't get this job, it's because um, the criteria of getting the, getting the job is not based only on the experience. The criteria of, of getting this job is definitely much more than that. And um, they were uh, unfortunately uh, not being able to fulfill the standards and fulfill the criteria that this airline has it. Uh, that's not. That's definitely not something against them in personal. It's again, I'm uh, emphasizing on, on the criteria, on the importance of um, being a person with an outstanding personality. Um, very often, candidates are looking for ready answers. Uh, yes, you're gonna learn the answer, uh, but what if you're cut in between answering that answer that you have learned? How much you are able to say? Um, and to answer on the question that has been asked for you. Ladies and gentlemen, please be aware that the recruitment process every day, from an open day to an open day, it's not getting easier, it's getting more tougher. It's because people have been faking it. The airlines are looking for people who are not faking it. The airlines are looking for honesty that um, is going to be presented and it's going to be there the enthusiasm that the candidates have um, during their open day and during their interview and um, during the beginning of their career it's uh, slowly going away with the time um, the airlines are looking for people who are going to be keeping the same enthusiasm and the same motivation as they had it uh, well, when they were applying for the um, for the job position of a cabin crew, the airlines, as I said, are looking for um, honesty, and uh, the criteria of getting the job is not going to be easier. It's going to be only tougher. We must be ready for that. And how to stay ready for that is to stay on my YouTube channel and watch my videos. In your point of view, what is aviation? This is an amazing question, and I would strongly suggest. Please, please don't use the definition uh, of uh, Wikipedia or the definition in the internet that, that is a flying or it's an operating of the aircraft. Uh, the recruitment team definitely knows that you know what is aviation, but over here you must show how you understand aviation. So you can only say beside operating uh, of an aircraft, beside uh, flying. I understand, uh, this is how I would answer the question. I would, um, uh, I understand aviation uh, equal to emotion. And you will trigger this answer. You might get an instant um, question on why do you understand aviation uh, as emotional? You can just carry on and, uh, explaining. The entire process of um, getting on a flight and um, being on a flight, reaching the destination, it's full of emotions, full of excitement, full of wondering. Um, the number one thing, uh, but the number one emotion is um, you're, um, you're, you're scared um, whether you're gonna reach the checking in on time. You have an emotion of being scared. Fine, you're reaching the checking in on time. Um, the number two is um, whether your bag is too heavy, you're wondering. Again, emotion of being of wondering: uh, is your bag too heavy, uh, or are you be able? Are you going to be able to to get all this um, um, carry-on baggage that you want to have it with you, your laptop and your carry-on bag? As I said, the number three is you're getting on the airplane and you are very hungry now because you've been through a long process of passport control and long. Uh, you you've been queuing long for the security checkpoint maybe some of your favorite liquids you have forgotten to remove it and they have been thrown away and you've been sad because of that um, and yet there are a lot of emotions included you're getting on the airplane you've been hungry you're getting the food and then it starts the long flight of 10 15 hours in which you have a lot of movies to watch but yet you are um, wondering on how everything is going to be once you reach the destination are you going to reach the destination on time? Um, your level of sensitivity is a bit different when you are um, when you're up in the air <laughs> and when you're down uh, on a on a train. Uh, there is a certain um, I wouldn't say um, you you are more scared, but um, 
it's not uh, it, the feeling of getting a turbulence in flight. Uh, it's definitely there is there is a saying that, that that goes well with this. There is no atheist on a turbulent aircraft, right? Um, so there is a lot of emotions included in aviation. The entire interaction of the cabin crew with the passengers is basically based on emotions. So with this question and with this answer uh, to the recruitment team, you're definitely going to be um, showing that you are a person of um, full of emotions, as I said. You're a person recognizing emotion. You are a person giving importance to emotion. This is what the recruiters are looking for. So I would answer this question that aviation for me means emotion, all the types of emotion incorporated in one aircraft for that particular time of a flying in which we're getting to know each other. We're getting sometimes angry of each other. We're balancing, we're doing so many things. Everything that we do in the aircraft is based on our emotions um, as a cabin crew and as a passengers. And if we're able to give importance to them, if we're able to recognize them, if we're able to deal with them, the flight will be very, very easy. Believe me, this is an amazing answer that the recruiters will love it. Very interesting question that can come up to anyone. It says, a large family on board of your flight and the family members are not willing to sit together. How do you handle it? Over here, the recruitment team is not looking um, how fast you are in changing seats. Um, you don't have time for that. Uh, number one thing, because this has happened to me so many times, so I'm gonna be telling you all the steps that are very important for the airline itself. The number one thing is to know as a cabin crew how much time I have until closer closing of the doors. Uh, how big is the load for that aircraft? If I have, if I'm aware that I have spare seats and the flight is let's say half empty, that I'm going to be assisting everybody to change the seat without any problem. But if it's a completely full flight, that means that my departure is in 10 to 15 minutes. I do not have time to anticipate all this, um, all this uh, requests. Um, then, therefore, I'm going to be informing my supervisor and together with my supervisor, we're going to offer apologies to the customers and we're going to ask politely the customers to be seated on their original seats. Now, later on, what we're going to be doing after this um, um, scenario after takeoff is uh, we are going to be seeing if we have time again I'm saying if we have time we're going to be seeing if we can accommodate the customers to be seated together uh, that also depends on how long is the flight uh, if it's a one hour flight or two hours flight that means it belongs to the shorter flights you're definitely not going to have time because you have another priority before this, which is called service. So what over here the recruiters are looking for is how well you are prioritizing. So if you mention that the changing of seats for me, it's not priority as my priority today is to close the doors on time and to depart on time. But if time permits, I'm going to be talking with my supervisor to bring the best decision in this situation. I strongly believe that my supervisor will be able to advise me on whether we have time to ask the ground staff to assist us, because there is a possibility for the ground staff to assist if time permits, or uh, you are going to be looking for solution. But first of all, the number one thing you should be mentioning to the recruitment team in this question is, that you should be aware of how much time you have to deal with this problem. Because if you have only 10-15 minutes before closing the door, your priority will be to ensure that everybody is seated, that all the luggage has been properly stowed, and that you don't have any luggage uh, problem and luggage uh, not being stored properly in the overhead bin. Because later on, if you have a bag who cannot fit in the overhead bin, you're going to be again delaying the flight. Now, as I said, the priority for every airline in every case like this is closing the doors on time and reaching the destination on time. Yet, don't forget that uh, your way of dealing with the customers in this way would be being very humble, being very understanding, knowing how long is the flight and let's say if it's a longer flight of four to five, six hours, ten hours, um, anything above five hours flight, you are going to do all your best 
to anticipate the customer's needs. Last but not the least, show to the recruiters that you are fully aware that the supervisors are writing something called a voyage report in which uh, your supervisor is going to mention the entire situation that has happened. Now, another important thing you should mention here is that you're going to make sure that these customers who are not happy with their seat, you're going to be observing them more on the flight. You're going to make sure and the recruitment will be asking you how you're going to do that. Because when you say I'm going to be observing them more, they will tell you how you're going to observe. You're not going to just stand there and look at them. No, you're going to be frequently asking them, man, do you need any more drinks? Do you need any more snacks? Uh, you're going to ensure that these passengers will be your priority for getting the meal choice. Although in the menu that the passengers are getting, it's written if they don't get their first meal choice, there is still a second and a third one. But you're going to mention to the recruitment team that these passengers who haven't gotten their uh, their uh, seats together, you're going to make sure that they get their meal choice. You're going to make sure that their in-flight entertainment is working. Um, you're going to make sure that entire products on board um, are available for them. And you are going to be constantly keeping an open communication with your supervisor uh, regarding this matter. And that will be an answer that the recruitment team will really, really like it. Give me any tips, please. I have an open day with an uh, invitation on 30th of November and I'm so afraid. Now, this is an absolutely general question. Uh, all the tips that I have, um, that I have for, this, uh, <laughs> for this question are starting from the first video on my uh, YouTube channel. So start watching the first video until you come to this one. I know the videos are quite long, but I have one saying that I have keep on using it. And that means the longer the video, the higher your chances. The shorter the video, the shorter your chances. Also, I would give an advice to you. Um, I would strongly avoid watching videos of um, how did I pass my open day? How did I pass my open day? It's not how you're going to pass the open day. Me and you were not the same people. You and your neighbor are not the same people. You and your um, schoolmates are not the same people. Every individual is a person for itself or every person is an individual of itself. And we all have certain characteristics which are leaving an impression, a different impression, either to the recruitment team, either to the sales manager in the store we're going with. So what I would be looking for is a format. What is the best way to present myself in a format? I will be looking for a structure. Um, I will be looking for uh, tips on how to structureize my answer. I'm not going to be looking for ready answers. I'm going to be listening for uh, ready answers to get an idea on how I should answer. But I'm not going to be copy pasting of what other people are doing because my stamp on it is not going to be the same as other people's stamp on it. So yeah, um, regarding this question, please go ahead on my um, um, first video and uh, you're going to get a lot of tips on how to make it. And congratulations! What is your favorite country to visit and why? Uh, I don't have one favorite country, I have a lot. <laughs> so I strongly believe that every country and every destination that um, I have been and you going to be going or you have been has something wow, something nice that we can um, enjoy and explore. Um, one of the number one destinations that um, I have been admiring uh, is Great Wall of China, is Beijing um, and um, I absolutely love the Chinese culture. Um, it's very rich, um, it's very interesting. I love India because I have visited Taj Mahal. It's amazing, it's amazing. I love Indian food. Um, I love Turkey. I feel like I'm home when I'm in Istanbul. I absolutely love the, um, the history that um, uh, the Ottoman Empire has uh, created. Um, believe me, there is no place that I have been that I have ne I haven't found anything that I uh, don't like. I found everywhere I have been, I found something that I like. So therefore, choosing what is one favorite country that I have been and why would be very difficult because I have always um, found either it's the food or the people or the or the entire environment. Um, I have been in a particular moment. I have found something that I like it. So um, 
you should if you're a person that is limiting uh, your uh, your senses to uh, one country to one thing uh, just open yourself open your boundaries and try to look for things that you would like anywhere you would go and that is something that would make you feel uh, feel good even in in the places that you would never thought you will feel good you will start feel it. you will you will be starting to feel uh, better and starting to feel good this is an interesting comment and she says you're the best mentor i wouldn't say that i'm a mentor um, although many times uh, people have uh, been sending me messages like oh would you be my mentor can you tell me um about this and this i don't see myself as a mentor i just see myself as an ex cabin crew with experience to share with you an experience but i'm not sharing with you how i uh, have done things because how I wouldn't recommend you to follow how I have done things because how I have done things uh, is uh, particular for me. But what I'm sharing with you on my YouTube channel is a format which I strongly believe is going to be working for you as well. Uh, one of the things that I have talked to you uh, in many of my videos and on my stories is structure. Learn how to structurize the answers. Number two important factor in the airline uh, industry is confidence. Build up your confidence. Number three, uh, show that you have a level of humility which doesn't overpower the people that you're going to be meeting and interacting and working with. Uh, I'm not saying to be uh, to humiliate yourself. I'm saying that you, when you are a confident person, you are yet not a person who's overpowering uh, people with experience because in the airline uh, industry, in the aviation business itself, the seniority is very important and that particular uh, ability to show uh, respect and to look at your superiors as someone you can learn from uh, is very, very important. Uh, at the same time with the passengers uh, itself, ability to listen to their needs, understand their needs is very, very important. And uh, these are one of the key factors that the recruiters are looking for. And thank you for this comment. Uh, this is a kind of an unclear question, but I will try to understand it. How to answer this question? Should a dishonest person should leave the job? Sh or she supposed, she, I think she thinks to say, should a dishonest person leave the job? Um, don't, what I would recommend is, uh, if you have been asked a question, uh, should a dishonest person leave the job? Uh, don't go straight away in saying, uh, yes, she's a dishonest person or he's a dishonest person and he's supposed to leave the job. Rather than that, um, show that you are having certain parameters on, first of all, um, have we double checked how dishonest is the person? Have we double checked the reasons why the person has been dishonest? Maybe this person has uh, some reasons. We I seriously think that it's very important to explore why then to bring a, a final decision that this person should leave the job. Uh, last but not the least, let's um, uh, try to help this person by understanding that being dishonest uh, doesn't bring anything um, good for her or him uh, in first place later on for the organization that is working and for the entire population of the colleagues uh, that person is working with. Show that you have criteria, that you are not an immediate decision-making process person in this matter because it's very important why somebody has been dishonest uh, in order to prevent such a thing for happening in the future because perhaps while uh, discovering why this person has been dishonest you can be uh, able to notice and to get um, other informations that uh, you won't be able to get if this person immediately leaves the job so show that you are a researcher, um, that you're an investigator, that you want to know the cause why this thing has happened and then later on definitely you're going to be um, agreeing to a certain solution uh, which is not going to be a solution only from your side, uh, it's going to be a solution definitely from the higher management. What should be a perfect answer for you? Why do you want to join aviation industry? I'm going to connect this again to what is aviation. You must answer this question from your heart. If you learn the answer that I'm going to give you right now, you're not going to be speaking from your heart. You're going to be um, just uh, sharing another definition that you have learned on the internet. And you're not going to be sounding natural. 
right? So just look for an answer that is motivating you. Again, it's not important so much of what you're going to say. It's important how you're going to say it. It's important how you're going to build up the relationship with the recruitment team. Um, suggestion. How I would say that, how I would answer this question is I would say that I would like to join the aviation industry because I'm a people's person. I just believe that my personality belongs with people. What does that mean? I am an emotional person. I am um, recognizing easily emotions. I am anticipating emotions. I am a balancing person. I am an instant helper. I never wait for um, people to ask me for help. I'm an observant person. I uh, see that uh, when people need um, help, I get in this instinct to uh, instantly help them. I strongly believe that my personality belongs in the aviation industry because I certainly believe that aviation is uh, connected strongly with emotions. Um, therefore, I'm also a person who acts immediately. I'm not afraid when somebody has fainted, for example, to go and to assist him. Um, I'm not a person who's hesitating, I'm a person who's acting. So this is how I would answer this question. But yet, please look for an answer that uh, you are able to express it from your heart. Don't learn it, learn the structure. And when you're answering a question, go straight to the point. Don't go around and around, you won't have time. You're gonna be getting cut and uh, you're gonna get another question in which you haven't learned the answer. It's very, very important to know that every answer should go, uh, that you're gonna be giving should be straight to the point that's gonna trigger the recruiters. And in this case, I have mentioned emotions and that is something the recruiters would really, really like. How to answer why do you want to be a cabin crew? <laughs> Again, someone who is looking for a ready answer. What I said before is that you're not supposed to do that. Um, one thing I would say and I would recommend, don't use answers of, uh, I'd like to travel, I'd like to meet new people, and I'd like to explore new destinations. No, this is not what the recruiters are looking for. Uh, why do you want to be, become a cabin crew? I said in the previous question I would answer because I'm a people's person. I strongly believe that my personality belongs uh, within people. I love learning about different cultures um, and I love um, dynamic uh, profession. I strongly believe that my outgoing personality is going to be perfectly fitting uh, within the um, uh, cabin crew job description. Mentioning an outgoing personality, mentioning that you are possessing an outgoing personality, you are actually mentioning one of the uh, one of the non-negotiable rules that are written in the application on uh, what uh, are the requirements uh, for becoming a cabin crew, and one of, and one of them is mentioned uh, people with uh, an outgoing personality, people who are willing to relocate in Doha. You can certainly say that I would absolutely love to live in Doha. I have been reading and exploring so much about the lifestyle in Doha and uh, I strongly believe that my personality is going to be fitting there. So try to find of some, try to look for something that um, the airline is already or already looking for and that you are able to express it on why you want to become a cabin crew. Definitely you won't go wrong by mentioning that you are a people's person, that you love working with people, that you love learning about different cultures, but just don't mention that you want to be a cabin crew because you want to travel and explore a new destination. Um, this is the type of answer and of course don't forget the um, uh, mentioning that uh, you would want to, um, you are a, per a person with uh, emotions. <laughs> if you are, it's going to be very much noticeable if you're not a person who is able to recognize emotions and to give importance to emotions that is also going to be noticed. So you have to formulate and structure this answer. Uh, as I have said, don't go around the bush, immediately answer why you want to become a cabin crew um, and avoid saying, because I love to travel. Miss, I got rejected in the final part, the deliver your photos one. Do you have any advice for me? Um, so definitely over here, what I can see is you're um, aware 
that uh, the photos you have delivered are perhaps not the proper ones, right? So in one of the um, uh, previous questions that I have discussed is you need to very carefully read the guidelines of um, what type of photo you should be having. Uh, one important factor over here is that you're supposed to be um, standing with your hands properly aligned. You should have a posture with your um, uh, shoulders um, looking straight. Don't take the photo from up, don't take the photo from down. Make sure the person who's taking the photo from you is standing up front of you. Uh, use a pleasant, um, um, express yourself like you look confident within yourself. Offer a pleasant smile. There are so many guidelines over there that are written how you're supposed to be standing. Uh, eventually in this process you haven't been following those standards so for the next one I would strongly suggest read each and every word on how you're supposed to take the photo and how you're supposed to look and I'm sure that you're going to be able to make it. What happens when a crew member get married or pregnant? <laughs> Nothing happens, they keep on working, but just they're going to be working in different departments. Now, this is a question or this is a query that if you're a cabin crew, you have got married, um, you become pregnant, right? So you have your dedicate as a cabin crew, every cabin crew has their own dedicated performance managers, which are going to be assisting you in this question and in this query in the best manner it's possible. Uh, you can change departments and that is going to be suggested, but you have to bear in mind, number one, what type of educational background you have, where you can be able to fit in and where is a vacancy available for you to work um, as a, um, in, in a different department. So it's not like that you've got uh, pregnant and you've got married and you immediately are gonna change to any department. You have to be eligible. You have to be um, able to uh, fit in, as I said, uh, based on your educational background, uh, based on the requirements in that particular department. Sometimes uh, some cabin crew would want to join the welfare department, but the welfare department is yet full and uh, there is no vacancy. So if you are asking me this question I wouldn't be able to give you a clear answer but uh, definitely uh, you are going to be assisted with your dedicated performance manager who's going to help you to find the best suitable solution for you and uh, you're not gonna be left just like that that I can promise you what are the opportunities for the growth in the career as a cabin crew in Qatar Airways if you go on the website, and I'm sure you have been, and if you open the um, vacancies, uh, most probably you have been searching for the cabin crew uh, job positions, right? Uh, you're going to be definitely, if you get the job as a cabin crew, you're going to be starting as a cabin crew in economy class, then you're going to go to a cabin crew in uh, business class, then you're going to... Um, progress to the level of being cabin senior in economy class until you become a cabin service director and being in charge of the aircraft right after the first officer, right? Uh, so, um, once you have completed all this circle of a cabin crew in flight, your next career progress most probably will be if you would like to choose to be an instructor or you would like to be a line trainer, um, a so-called... Um, um, let me remember, let me remember, I'm running out of terms. Um, the performance uh, officers who are doing a check on the cabin crew and in-flight check, uh, first they're doing the assessments on the cabin service directors and on the cabin seniors, and they're overall checking the entire flight. You can be a safety line trainer who's going to be flying. There are loads of opportunities. What is important is when you'll be reaching the um, level of cabin service director and you're looking for a career, career growth, there is something available in the internal vacancies uh, which uh, uh, is suitable for so many cabin service directors with the enough experience uh, in the particular um, role of a cabin service director which they can apply. I have so many friends that are, um, that are now instructors and uh, after flying for three to four years as cabin service directors, they're now working in the office as uh, performance managers and there are loads of loads of opportunities um, and believe me that uh, the progress within the cabin crew career uh, itself it's endless um, there are loads of uh, departments that you can change um, after um, flying of course 
you only have to what, what you only have to do is uh, to follow the internal vacancies and most of the airlines have their um, internal vacancy program in which their current cabin crew are able to apply for um, uh, certain job positions and they are, they are eligible uh, in and uh, you're not only limited to stay in flying you have a lot of choice so therefore don't worry if you're looking for a career progress within the cabin crew uh, job itself uh, it's endless questions related to the flight attendant and the passenger for example how to deal with an angry customer very very important when you have some passenger customer who is angry your role is to first of all be a good listener you have been called to assist this person this passenger this customer who is very very angry your role number one is to be a good listener when somebody is angry you don't want to be standing on top of him and looking at him like right sir okay i understand no but you're gonna go to the level of the passenger, right? If he's sitting, let's say he, we suppose that he's sitting in his dedicated passenger seat, you're gonna be slightly bending down and you're gonna main, maintain a proper eye contact with the passenger. Yet, don't forget that you should have a certain distance because we don't know this customer when his anger is gonna rise up or is gonna calm down. Number two, as uh, number one, as I said, you are a good listener. You're gonna let the customer vent out. He's very angry. You must understand why he is very angry. If he is very angry with you, once he's finished, you must immediately offer an apology. How are you gonna offer the apology? You're not gonna be like, I'm very sorry. You're gonna be showing humility, something that I have been speaking about, what the recruiters are looking for, and you're gonna be using a soft tone of voice expressing how sorry you have been that you have been misunderstood in that particular situation. It's all about how you speak. You yourself, you are having the power to bring the anger of this passenger down if you know how to do it. If he's not angry with you, that's even better. In any circumstance, you're gonna apologize after he is finished after he has been vent out because what this person is looking for he's angry he tries to throw his anger and you're gonna be listening and you're gonna say right sir i have completely understood what you have said and i'm so sorry from the bottom of my heart you are using a soft tone of voice you're using a hand gesture expressing to him how sorry you are i strongly believe that this passenger has his anger up to 50 percent down now, try to paraphrase on why he's angry. I've understood that this has happened to you and I must say that this should have never happened to you. What are you offering next to this passenger or customer is understanding and double checking whether you have got him right. Because in most of the cases in, or in some cases, because he's so angry, he's throwing so much of information. Maybe you didn't get his anger or his information with his anger properly, but you must paraphrase what has happened to him, right? So you are saying, not like pointing so much of what he has said, but using the key words of his anger, that you understood what has happened to, you, to him. And you are full of understanding. You are using a sentence like, this should have never happened to you. Let me take care of this. Let me offer you something else. Let me inform my supervisor and we're gonna look for a solution together. The number last thing that is important in this case is that you don't leave the customer unattended. You are giving him a solution and how you're giving him a solution is by knowing your resources. You have to be a person full of knowledge. I'm not saying that you must know everything, but full of knowledge in terms of you know your products, which products you are having on board that can help. In this case, we don't know why the passenger is angry, but first of all, you must understand why he is angry. And how are you gonna understand why he is angry is by being a good listener and always go to the eye level of the customer, maintaining a certain distance, offering an assistance, offering understanding, paraphrasing what he's gonna say and expressing 
a deep regret that this, what has happened to him, should have never happened to him and that you are the one who's going to be taking care of the problem that the customer has. This is the type of answer the recruiters are looking for. They don't look for, oh, he's angry, I'm going to call for someone to take care of him and I'm going to leave him. But rather than that, you are doing something to calm the anger of the passenger down by modifying your tone of voice, by showing understanding, by using a proper hand gesture and offering a solution. Ma'am, can you please tell me the whole process of open day interview of Qatar Airways? Spoon feeding. Somebody wants to know everything, show up there, and when there is a change, we'll be like, yeah, but Julia told me that this is the process. You must be ready for a change. Whatever the process is, you should not be worried about. You should be worried about how your CV will look like. You should be worried about what you're gonna wear, how you're gonna do your makeup. You should be worried about how you're gonna introduce yourself. You should be worried about what type of question the recruiter might ask me. I have to learn structure. I have to learn how to present myself. Or worrying about the entire process of how the open day looks like is completely wrong. But I don't mind to say it because um, you've been asking me this and I strongly believe that every um, question deserves a proper answer. But I just told you that you must prioritize when you worry about something that should be uh, the number one thing to do. So uh, sometimes uh, the airline, most of the time the airline is organizing open days, but sometimes uh, and now very frequently it's happening that it's a, an assessment day straight away. So if it's an open day, that means you're going to show up over there and you're going to leave your um, CV. So once the recruitment team has all the CVs done in the open day, prior to that there will be uh, an, in, an um, uh, introduction or a it's going to be a presentation of Qatar, of Qatar Airways, of the life in Doha. After that, you're going to be requested to leave your CV. And then during that day, you're supposed to be uh, called based on the quality of your CV. So this is the thing that I mentioned to you. You should be worried about what type of CV you're going to have. And yes, I have a video on that. Uh, I have a video of how your perfect uh, CV for Qatar Airways uh, cabin crew job should look like. It's down there. Don't uh, hesitate to go and um, uh, watch it. So uh, later on, if you have gotten the call to, to attend the assessment day, the assessment day always starts with an English test in uh, which I have made a video on how the English test looks like, right? So you can also go to that video and have a look at how the English test might look like and what you should expect. Uh, then comes the um, um, assessment in all the stages of the um, assessment they are um, having elimination so after the english test there will be elimination then you're gonna go and present yourself uh, to be checked whether you are able to reach two on two centimeter um, then again is elimination and in this time you are also declaring any visible scars that you have um, very important uh, and uh, then later on uh, right after you have been done with the um, scars you might get a group discussion you might not get a group discussion so uh, this is subject to change and i strongly believe that the recruitment team is implementing this whether how much they are happy with you uh, with the, with the interaction with you because when you are leaving your cv and when you're interacting with the recruitment team while you're declaring the scars while you are uh, walking through the um, two on two uh, while you're presenting yourself whether you're able to reach two on two you can be asked a question anytime out of those 120 questions that I have said, plus this ones that you have been asking me, you can be asked the question anytime. It all depends how happy the recruitment team is going to be with your performance. Uh, often they're uh, organizing the group discussions uh, in which you are divided into seven to eight people in your group and you have a certain topic that you are discussing. And then later on there comes to uh, the elimination of getting a personal interview in which you are sitting one-on-one -on -one with the uh, recruitment team and you have all the questions being asked. Basically, I love to say that's the time when you can sell yourself properly or just um, get a chance to introduce yourself. Nice to meet you and not being able to, uh, to get in. And inter the interviews, as I said, are getting tougher and tougher. Nothing is getting easier. The job itself is getting tougher. Uh, the requirements are getting 
uh, more and more so and therefore you should be therefore you should be um, ready for more challenges but uh, as I said if you're a person that is perfect for this job uh, you're gonna nail it and uh, if you also follow my YouTube videos that are long the longer the video the better the chances I'm sure that you're gonna get an idea of uh, what types of answer you should be preparing um, and how you should be presenting yourself uh, during the interview. So I hope that this has helped you. Later on, uh, after the interview, of course, you're going to be getting an um, um, email in which you're going to be asked to... You, after the interview, you're going to be uploading your photos that are requested and then you're going to get the confirmation whether you should proceed with your medicals uh, that you're supposed to do in your home country or, unfortunately, um, when it happens, the candidates would receive a regret um, email that their application is not going to be processed. What signs make you feel that you have been really liked by the interviewer? Um, one of the signs perhaps that the interviewers were um, enjoying conversation uh, and enjoying interviewing you, interviewing you would be if the interview takes longer. Usually the interview would be taking around 30 minutes, but if your interview took longer, that means that they were in the need to ask you more questions. The number two is that you are fully aware of, of the quality of the answers that you have given and you felt that when you were interacting with the recruitment team it was more like a conversation um, you were feeling that they were engaged with what you were saying um, i strongly believe that as um, smart people we should instantly know and um, when somebody likes us, when somebody likes to be with us, or when people don't like to be with us. That's kind of a felt feeling. Um, one of the parameters that uh, the, the recruiters might um, like you is if they ask you, do you have any questions for us? Uh, this is also something in which they are opening themselves to you for a future collaboration. And of course, to get to know you, to get to see what are you interested in in your future career growth. So these are small kind of parameters in which um, the recruiters can show that they are enjoying uh, being um, at that particular interview with you and that uh, you felt that you are in an engaging conversation um, and a pleasant conversation and you felt that um, it was a positive atmosphere among uh, you and the recruitment team. Is it allowed for the cabin crew to have fake teeth? And um, how are your teeth so white? <laughs> well, um, depends how fake your teeth look like. Um, in one of the um, preferred uh, looks for a cabin crew, of course, is um, having a nice smile. Very often I receive uh, messages from candidates. I have um, space between my teeth. My teeth are not aligned properly or I have braces. Um, and stuff like that. So you should be having a pleasant smile. Remember um, that you are going to be working with people. Um, fake teeth, uh, I don't know in what types of fake teeth we're talking over here. Of course, the, um, um, the famous methods that are now available uh, make the teeth look very nice, very natural. I don't see any problem with that. Um, how my teeth are very white is um, I use um, always a whitening um, toothpaste, teeth whitening toothpaste. There are so many available, you can just Google it. And um, I, I wouldn't be um, over here suggesting any brand. Um, whitening strips are also a great way to have your teeth white. And uh, since you're from Serbia and you asked me this question, uh, you can find a lot of dental whitening kits in DM, um, DM um, uh, stores. Uh, they're all amazing and I've tried them, so uh, yeah, that's how your teeth will be white. And of course, I would recommend every three to six months to do a proper dental cleaning uh, of your teeth uh, to maintain healthy teeth, uh, like caries uh, free. And um, of course, brushing your teeth morning and evening, uh, flossing your teeth, using a liquid as well um, after you have eaten would also help. So therefore, um, uh, Paying attention and take, ca taking care of your teeth on a daily basis uh, would help you uh, have this beautiful smile. And somebody has remembered to ask me how I am, okay? I'm in the ninth month of my pregnancy. 
uh, with a lot of mood swings around, um, um, a lot of um, a lot of desire to meet my babies here. Uh, a lot of emotions are here. Um, I'm a little bit scared, I must say, that um, I don't know what how I will manage uh, to be um, as a mother. Uh, that's a completely different role. Um, although I might look like I'm the most confident person in the world, yet I have my fear of um, how things will go on. But one thing that uh, is constantly present uh, with me is that any challenge I'm going to be facing in my future role uh, in my life as a mother, I'm going to be fully um, taking the responsibility and I'm not going to be running away from it. So yeah, I've been doing so far so good. Thank you for asking me and that's all I can say on this question. Make a video of tiny scars if someone has so he can be cruel or not. Uh, now over here it's a very straightforward rule is that the scars um, you should declare if they're on a visible places such as a face, neck, your hands and uh, for the ladies uh, your um, um, legs starting from your knees um, and down up to your feet those are considered as visible places of any scars perhaps you're born with it now uh, what you are asking me is to talk general about scars which um, I might do it in another video but I certainly think that every person uh, that possesses any scar it's a story for himself uh, the best person to give you the right answer on scars will not be me or any of the youtubers it's going to be the recruitment team um, please um, avoid um, interpreting this um, um, as a, if somebody with a scar has been recruited that not, not necessarily means that you're gonna be recruited with the scar the reflection the skin tone uh, that you have it's not the same with the other person same goes with the tattoo if I was recruited with a tattoo doesn't mean that if you or anyone else who's watching this video who has a tattoo is going to be recruited with the same every process is individual and therefore um, speaking about scars in general uh, wouldn't uh, give any assurance to you or to anyone else who's concerned about it it's going to be the recruitment team who's going to um, be assessing this um, in the best manner possible and uh, of course uh, we'll uh, we'll be the one who's going to be giving the green light whether you can proceed with the application having a scar or not now when it comes to light scars and tiny scars as you said there is a possibility to um, conceal them uh, but bear in mind that even concealing them if they're on a visible places you still have to declare them because sooner or later you might not you might forget to uh, conceal that scar and it's not going to be a pleasant experience later on if you haven't declared that you have that tiny uh, small uh, little scar don't forget the rule of honest and loyalty over here can you make uh, videos on behavioral uh, questions and answer asked in the interview? This is from someone who has no idea that I have a YouTube channel and that I have answered 120 questions which are all behavioral types of questions on how you should behave in which I have uh, given you an ideas of uh, structured answers that you should be using. So I strongly suggest to go to, go to those um, videos that are long every video is lasting for more than one hour and as i said many times before i'm gonna say it once again the longer the video the better the chances the shorter the video the lesser the chances another thing which i would suggest is whichever youtubers youtubers you are following uh, make sure you get to know their uh, flying experience because it's not the same uh, when I'm giving you suggestions and advices on how to become a cabin crew, uh, those uh, suggestions and advices are totally different from the ones who have been flying for two years, uh, from the ones who have been flying for five years, and me that have been flying for ten years. Um, gaining a credibility in the um, airline industry and in this subject of how to become a cabin crew in particular is uh, something related with the experience. Uh, the more the person has experience, the more information they're gonna give you. Um, in this format, I all my videos that are coming up are just 
totally unable to be fit in 10 to 15 minutes i know that uh, people are getting their uh, are losing their interest in watching the video maybe perhaps after 15 to 20 minutes but uh, my youtube channel is not created to gather a lot of audience my youtube channel is created mainly for quality over quantity and the candidates who have been dedicating their time some of you have been watching my videos two to three times and who have been dedicated their times to watch my videos my long videos have actually made a huge success have actually realized where they have failed it in their answers and that gives me um, my biggest reward because your success is my success and I strongly believe that over here we are sharing a mutual um, a mutual uh, level of success, mutual understanding, our relationships are long lasting. I am interacting on a daily basis with all the candidates that have gotten their job and I'm extremely, extremely proud of each and everyone who has gotten their job thanks to following my format, not my advices, but my format. Because over here, and I uh, always uh, say this, I'm not, uh, I don't want to spoon feed you. My YouTube channel is not for people who want to know the process from uh, application until interview. My YouTube channel is for people who are ready to work on themselves, building up the confidence, getting to know you, uh, yourself, becoming co uh, comfortable within yourself, um, kind of more motivational, but yet with loads of information on what you should answer to the recruitment team, how to sell yourself in the proper way. So therefore, uh, behavioral questions, see yeah, there on the three videos um, of the uh, possible interview questions that the recruiters might ask you. So go ahead and enjoy. Now, so many informations have shared uh, with you in this video. And uh, I'm going to be seeing you, I don't know when, in another video. Until then, please stay blessed. Don't forget to subscribe and like my uh, video. Don't forget to go and scroll the other videos from the first one until the last one, until this one. And uh, if you are able to present yourself, as I've said so many times, if you're able to present yourself with a proper CV format, with a proper CV that I have made a video on it, on how it should look like. If you're able to dress for success, also I have made a video on how you should be dressed and how you should look like. For the gentleman, this question has been answered in this video. If you are able to stand with confidence, with confidence, with a comfortable attitude within yourself, with a level of humility towards the recruitment team, with a structured answer, you're not posing, you're not staying blank when you've been asked a question. When you have been cut from your answer, you are able to fit in with the next uh, answer. You are able to be saying in examples. Um, you don't have to talk about how good person you are, but you can share examples on how good performer you are. And um, if you're able to use that uh, pleasant facial expression, open palm gestures, um, pleasant tone of voice, proper standing. These are very, um, generally speaking, yet very important factors. You are going to be able to make it um, in your future career as a cabin crew. As I said, stay blessed and um, have a nice day. I'm going to be seeing you as soon as possible. Bye bye and have a nice day.